Hey guys, it's Sarah and today is Booklist Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library and every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or topic that we feel like talking about for the week and this week we're going to go into some nonfiction. Nonfiction is something I'm getting much more into over the past couple of years. I would say I've read a bit more nonfiction. I've especially grown fond of true crime. So there's going to be some of those in this list. And it's just something I've been gravitating towards more often, which I'm really happy about. There's different types of nonfiction, obviously, you know, you have your true crime, you have memoirs, you have um, biographies, you have um, just something surrounding something else. A lot of them can be historical. And yeah, so uh, I'm going to talk about five books that I have read and loved and recommend, and then five books on my TBR that I haven't read yet, but I'm really excited to. So for the nonfiction that I've read, the first one I would love to recommend is The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. This is a true crime book, and this follows Ted Bundy. And the thing that makes this book so special is that Anne Rule was actually friends with Ted Bundy. They worked together for a time before... <laughs> all of his stuff started. And so she had that personal connection with him and they had that connection throughout the rest of his life. It got more sporadic as time went on and then she started realizing what he was doing <laughs> and you know, seeing the news and seeing him being hunted and seeing him in jail being arrested. She experienced all that with him. So that is definitely something that makes this much more special to me than just a regular true crime of someone just investigating it. She actually lived through it with him. So you get that personal side of it as well. And this book was so eye opening. I knew about Ted Bundy, obviously, I think everybody does. But I didn't realize exactly what he did. I didn't realize the details of what he did to these women. And uh, it was hard to stomach. It really was. Um, hmm. So, yes. But I loved it. I just, I loved every page of that book. And it was really cool, personally for me too, because he was arrested in Pensacola, which is where I went to college and met my husband. And he was arrested on a street that I walked up and down millions of times in college. So that was really interesting. I never knew that before. And yeah, so just a few things were just things that I knew about or I knew where they were because I was from the area. So um, that had a little bit of a more personal connection to me as well. But this book is fantastic. It's definitely one of the best nonfiction books I've ever read. And I recommend it to everybody. The next one I would like to recommend is a biography and it is Unbroken by Lauren Hillebrand. Now this one follows a man named Louis Zamperini and he was a prisoner of war and this book follows his journey. It actually you know starts with his childhood and he was even an Olympic runner. <laughs> he got he like competed in the Olympics and then he joined the military when I believe World War II happened and he was on a plane that went down over the ocean. He had to survive that, which was, I was clenching so badly when I was reading this book and just the things that he had to do in order to survive. And then he was found by the Japanese soldiers and then taken as a prisoner of war. Oh my goodness, the things this man experienced, and it's all true. <laughs> it's all real. Um, Louis Zamperini died a few years ago, I believe. Um, not too long after the movie uh, premiered, um, Angelina Jolie, her, she directed it, I think, and um, you know made this movie of Unbroken. I haven't seen the movie yet. I actually would like to watch it, but this book was a huge surprise. I did not think I was going to love it as much as I did, but I just found myself almost gasping for breath with what this man experienced and what he survived. It is insanity, and I would not have been able to do it. I would not have. I would have broken. Like, let's just call it what it is. I would have broken. I would have. Nope. Mm -mm. So it's fantastic. The next one I'd like to recommend is definitely a hard topic to read about. 
and that is Columbine by Dave Cullen. This is the you know, like investigation and what happened at Columbine High School in Colorado when two students walked in and shot a lot of people. Um, This is one, I'm not going to say it's the first school shooting because it's not, but this was the first kind of highly publicized school shooting where, you know, there's 24 hour news cycles and everybody's picking it up really quickly and the media was more what it is today. So you're getting wind of it really, really quickly. And um, so that's kind of why there's a big significance put on it. It is also one of the most evil things I think any of us have ever watched happen. And reading this book, you really get the feel for that. You see a little bit more into the backgrounds of the shooters. You see a little bit more into their... um, diaries and their notebooks and the things that they were documenting at the time when they were planning this. And you see their families and how their families reacted and what they were going through as well. And it's heartbreaking. It's really, really, it was a heartbreaking book to read, but it was also very informative. I feel like I learned a lot from it because I do remember when this happened. I remember watching it happen and, you know, reading it now you know, I read it uh, a couple of years ago and it just broke my heart all over again and gave me some, you know, newer insights. Of course, you know, this was written after, you know, a few years after the fact. And so you had more time to research and figure out what was going on and talk to psychologists and do all these things. And it just kind of helped it become a little bit more complete. But yeah, it was um, definitely informative, a hard read, but also I think an important one. And now we're going to go with a lighter, (laughs) a lighter one. And this is a celebrity memoir. I don't read many of those. It depends on who the celebrity is. It depends on if I kind of care what they have to say or what their story is or whatever. So I don't read a ton, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm definitely not someone who just goes gaga over all the celebrities. But this one is one of the best nonfiction books I've ever (laughs) read. read. And I have to say you have to listen to it because it just brings it to a whole nother level. And that is I Can't Make This Up by Kevin Hart. He reads it, obviously, his, as the narrator. And I was laughing before he even started reading the book, just the intro. And oh my gosh, it was just so funny. So Kevin Hart is a comedian. And um, if you have not seen any of his comedy or you want more of his comedy, definitely check out Netflix. He has a lot of things up there right now. It's, oh gosh, <laughs> um, be ready for the vulgar, be ready for the cursing. He's very, he's very, very adult, but I laugh so hard every time I see him. And this book, what I really liked about this one is that he is talking about things that he's experienced in his life, how he got to where he is today, the people that helped him get there. And what I really like is that he took a lot of his life lessons that he's learned along the way and he tied them into his jokes and you know like I made this joke about this and this was funny and funny funny but here's what I learned from it you know and so I really liked that part of it is that he turned everything into a life lesson which is really important so love Kevin Hart loved this book I recommend it all the time I'm I don't know that you can get it anywhere other than audible when I listened to it it was an audible exclusive type thing so I'm not sure about that But if you can get your hands on the audiobook, huge, huge, huge recommend for me. And then the last one that I have read that I would recommend is Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. This is the book that the play was based on. So this is the book that Lin-Manuel Miranda read and said, this needs to be a thing. And now it's this huge thing. (laughs) And this one, it's huge. It's big. I think it's over 800 pages, but oh my gosh, it's written so well. And it's written in a way that is not pretentious. It's written so that like anybody can pick this up and read it really truly. It's very approachable. It's not muddled down with all sorts of things that you just, you're getting confused and confused. It was really interesting. I really like the way that Ron Chernow writes. I want to read more books written by him. I've actually collected a couple of other things that he has written and that I would like to read. And 
I think that makes it special. I really do because you can read, you know, a biography about a president or, you know, someone historical and it's so boring and it reads like a textbook and blah, blah, blah. And then you just lose interest, you know, not even halfway through. And that's not the case with this. His writing is fantastic. He brings it to reality all the time. He ties things into today. And I just, I thought it was brilliant. I absolutely loved that book. And I definitely recommend it, especially if you've seen Hamilton and you kind of know the play really well, probably by now. Um, I would definitely recommend reading the book as well. And it is good on audio too. So whether you physically read it or do the audio, I've done both. They're both great. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about five books that are on my shelves that I really, really want to read. When I went over to where my nonfiction stuff is on my shelf, these were the ones that really just kind of stood out to me. So the first one is The Library Book. This is by Susan Orlin. And this one was sent to me very kindly by someone on Facebook. And this one is a book that chronicles a library fire. I think it was the Los Angeles Public Library, Los Angeles Public Library, yep, in 1986, that uh, library burned, <laughs> basically burned to the ground. And so this goes into a little bit of, um, it kind of starts out investigating that and what happened and was it set deliberately. Uh, she interviews people who were there and um, people who are involved in it. And then it also kind of morphs into the library as a whole, as a system, as, you know, why it's so popular and, you know, why it's so important and all those things. So I really definitely obviously want to read this book as I am about to finish up my degree in library sciences. So um, this is definitely one that I would like to get to. Another one I would really like to read, it was another one that was sent to me, um, is Educated by Tara Westover. I really, really want to read this book. Now, um, this one is very popular. It really became popular kind of for everybody. It was one of those books that really just took off and all sorts of different people were picking it up. Even people who don't read a lot, they were still picking it up. And this one follows a woman who spent her childhood living with her parents who were very much uh, off the grid. They didn't believe in modern medicine. They didn't believe in schools. Um, and from what I'm hearing, obviously I haven't read it yet, from what I'm hearing, she goes into a lot of things that were happening as far as abuse goes from both her father and her brother. And she is telling this from her point of view, from her memories, and it has come out since the book was published, um, I think her brother pushed back a lot and said, this is not what happened. So I will see. But um, I'm not sure who to believe on that. And obviously, I haven't read the book. So I don't, you know, I can't speak to anything like that. But um, I do believe there is power in someone telling their story. So, you know, and everyone experiences things differently as well. So I'm definitely really, really interested in reading this one. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't yet. The next one I would really like to read, and this is one that I picked up when I was in Savannah at a bookshop there, and that is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This is one woman's obsessive search for the Golden State Killer. And she was a journalist, I believe. Um, and she was really obsessed with finding this person. And he had never been caught. Uh, no one knew who he was. There were some clues happening and she was following a lot of these things and trying to figure out who this person is. And I believe, I don't know what the Golden State Killer actually did. I haven't read the book yet. I haven't done any research on him, but it was a serial, he is a serial killer and um, just they could never track him down. They couldn't figure out who this person was. And I think the killings had stopped. So he either... They kind of assumed either he passed away or he just stopped doing it. I don't know. But um, the thing about this one is that Michelle McNamara passed away before the book was finished. And um, not too long after she passed away, someone was arrested <laughs> um, as the Golden State Killer. I don't know where it has gone from there since. I actually should probably research that before I pick this book up and see where it's gone since then, um, if they've been able to prove that this person is. But they did make an arrest. So that's really interesting. Um, so I'm going to go into this with some not super, super high expectations only because I have heard that since she passed away before this was finished, it can feel a little choppy. 
like you can kind of tell <laughs> that she didn't finish it. And it was finished by people who were on her research team and who were helping her throughout this whole process. So it, it wasn't just like someone random finishing it up. It was finished by her research team, but maybe um, they wouldn't have told the story quite as well as she could have possibly. So I'll go into it remembering that and keeping that in mind, but I definitely do want to read this one. And I believe this has been adapted already, <laughs> like it's already started or it has already been on. Um, so there is that too. I was kind of hoping to have this done before that, but oh well. And the next one I want to read is I have a little bit of a fascination with uh, cults, <laughs> especially religious cults. Uh, just something about that is incredibly intriguing to me just like learning about them and learning why these people believe these things and how they're lured in and all that stuff so um one that i have on my shelves is breaking free this is by rachel jeffs um it's how i escaped polygamy the flds cult and my father warren jeffs now i remember warren jeffs i remember when he was arrested uh ooh, he's not a good person <laughs> um he was arrested, oh gosh, I think he was in Utah when it happened, but he also had um, a community in Tucson, Arizona, I believe, which is where we lived. Um, so I remember hearing a whole lot about him because I think he had some ties to the community there as well. Um, but yes, he has been arrested and um, this is written by one of his daughters. I'm sure he has multiple. So definitely want to... Um, read this and, you know, learn more about all of that. So yeah, and this was also sent to me by a subscriber. Last one on my list and probably the one that terrifies me the most <laughs> is Helter Skelter. Ooh, the true story of the Manson murders. Um, this is by Vincent Bigliosi and Kurt Gentry. I'm scared of this book. So, um, the reason I'm scared of this is because this scared my mom and my mom does not spook easily. She can handle a lot of things, but she said this one scared her. Great. Perfect. So, um, but oh my gosh, do I want to read it? It's definitely a true crime classic, I would say. And this follows the infamous Manson murders in California in the sixties where, uh, his members of the Manson family, uh, went into, a house in Hollywood and completely butchered a lot of people, including Sharon Tate, who was a famous actress. She was pregnant at the time. Um, <laughs> so I definitely want to, oh, I want to read this, but I think this one is going to freak me out, like really, truly. And um, Charles Manson has since passed away. He passed away in jail um, a few years ago, actually. And gosh, that man was crazy crazy. And he fascinates me because I, I really want to know more about how he's able to influence people the way that he did. He got people to kill people. I don't understand <laughs> how you can have that kind of power over someone else's brain. I don't understand it. So that's why this is so fascinating to me. Same with the cult thing. Like you're literally getting people to do your bidding regardless of how crazy it is or what it is or how illegal it is. You know what I mean? So very interesting to me. Um, I do want to read this one. Oh, it just, it terrifies me though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put on my big girl pants <laughs> and read this one. Ooh, yeah. Okay, guys, those are some nonfiction recommendations for you. Five that I have read, five that I really want to read. Let me know down below if you guys read nonfiction, because not everybody does. And if you do read nonfiction, what type is kind of your favorite or your go-tos? Let me know that. Let me know some of your favorites, some ones that really stood out to you. And make sure you go check out Lindsay and see which books she is talking about and recommending today and which books are on her TBR as well. So hope you guys have a wonderful day. I will see you again soon. Bye.